はいここねトラスミーです worth it I'm screwing with my tripod it's not cooperating oh it's, it's cooperating it's just not the right angle um I should really put my copy elsewhere. I'm honestly afraid it's gonna fall. I got this mug at a thrift store a few months ago. I'd love to find the other ones. Um, hold on. I'll put it over there. And here we go. Um, I did this video um, a few days ago. It cut off at the end. I babbled for like 37 minutes. It cut off at the end. I was going to do a little end piece. And I decided to just do the whole thing over. Um, I hope the lighting isn't that bad. I have like, I hate like all the lights on in the house. Uh, but I have the hall light on, this light on, and the bathroom light on, so hopefully the lighting isn't that bad. It, the um, viewfinder, it looks a bit dark, but we'll see. Uh, this isn't a really visual, you know, video, so I guess it's fine. Um, two weeks ago on Sunday, uh, my best friend for... Well, I'm going to try to word this in a way that I'm just going to try to explain this like not like assuming you know things about me like if you're a new person you totally don't know anything about my life um my best friend for 14 years we fought hello high water to be together we were very very close we cuddled, we kissed, but we still just called each other best friends and we um, just were together so long. We fought so hard to be together and we fought for each other so much and we sacrificed. We went through money stress and anyway, um, it's going to be two weeks. Sunday, he died. Um, he passed away and... It's really hard on me. I cried my ass off in the other video. I thought maybe a few days it's past. I'm not in the crying mood now. But I might cry. You know, we'll see. Um, and he was the main income. My selling is very sporadic. And I was trying to make it so hard to be um, full time one day. I have my hopes that will be full time. I, I'm good at it for you know the inventory that I have. I just need more of it and this hope that you know I can we can be better one day and you know, I had so much hope in me that I was going to be you know uh, do do it. He he loved me so much and he respected me. He thought that I was one of the most smart people that he's ever met. Um, he enabled me because he loved me so much. Um, and too much. Because now, there's so many things. It's just, I met him when I was 18 years old. I'm, I'm 32 now. And there's, I, I've grown a lot since then, but i have also not. Because it's just, I've always been this irresponsible punk kid, you know, someone that you'd want to just kick in the ass and, you know, say, hey, you know, you fought the loser, you should get your act together. And he always protected me from his mom, from, you know, other people. Um, you know, my fa family once, once said that he... Um, I, cause I said I'm insecure because of childhood things. And they said, 
I think you're insecure because of Harry. You've been living with him, and since you've been living with him, you haven't gotten him job or anything, so I think he's beating you down. And I told him, and we had a good laugh about it, because he's he told me so many times, you know, you should go and get go to college. You should go and do this. Oh, I saw a job opening for this. Maybe you could get into that career. And he would try so hard to push me as much as possible. And if you know me, I'm very stubborn. And I'm very immature. So if I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. I'm very stubborn. And so the thought that they were blam blaming someone other than me, especially Harry, that I wasn't wor working towards anything. This reselling is the only thing that I've really committed to. I started a couple things and then I quit uh, before. And I actually, this last this next year, I wanted to be one of those people that I have two jobs and I'm working really hard and I, uh, I'm making all this money and I actually wanted to do that. Now I have to and now my, my hand is um, twisted and I am going to have to, uh, one, th one thing um, that he enabled me in a way, um, I don't have a driver's license because Many years ago, I was about 19 years old. I took the test twice. I took the, the last time I should have studied a little more and then took it again. I should have took it a third time. I'm just very bad with test with like written tests. Um, I'm not good at reading that manual. I'm going to have have to. I promised myself by the end of this month, I'm going to, you know, read the. This is the 21st I think um, I told myself I'm going to read the manual and by the end of this month I'm going to take the test but we'll see um, and now that he's gone it's for me it's I have to do it for myself and it's not an option to avoid it anymore to put it all it's just there's so many jobs that like a piece of delivery person uh, that I would need my own car, obviously, but I'm th I have this truck, but it's like three hundred fifty dollars a month because his credit was shitty. I'm not on it. His credit was shitty, so the interest was through the roof. He had all this medical bills to pay for, and um, you know, I, it's just a, the last few hours of his life. He had he was very sick. Um, he was running in the bathroom and he was sleeping and I can be satisfied that we cuddled a lot during that time and he, we would always have this thing where I would say, you know, um, and someone said, um, you can never eat pizza ever again, but like you had to choose between pizza for the rest of your life or cuddling the rest of your life, what would you choose? And he would go, um, uh... And I would say, Harry, or, you know, we would call each other babe. It was a whole thing. Babe? And you'd go, cuddles, cuddles, of course. That's the best thing ever. And I would say the same thing with ice cream. Would you pick ice cream or cuddles? And you go, I don't know, ice cream's pretty good. But I pick cuddles. It's the best thing. So, you know, I at least took care of them in that way. I have this electric blanket that, you know, uh, I bought it for him because he always said that he was colder. Like, we would fight over the thermostat. I like the thermostat 75 degrees. And it's just cold I can tolerate. And I don't think 75 degrees is cold. Cold I can tolerate, but hot I cannot tolerate. I would tell him, I'd scream at him, I have enough stress in my life, okay? I don't need to be obsessed with what temperature the thermostat's at, okay? Um, and you are making it so I'm constantly have to check the thermostat to see how hot it is. He's like, you don't need to check that thermostat. I'm like, yes, it would be like 82 degrees in here. And he would say, it's fine, I'm not... I would say I'm sweating in my own house 
because the heater is up so high. This is driving me insane. Um, and I'm just tr trying to focus on um, right now. It's just there's so many things I sacrificed. Um, there's so many things that I sacrificed for him. And my grandma was kind of like that too. She was a very selfless person. But I'm selfless too. Like, I have an attitude, of course. I mean, I can, I can hold my own. But, and I just feel like he gave me this fire that I have in me to be defensive and to be angry if I need to be and there's fire inside of me and now that he's gone I feel like it's taken away from me even though I guess I'm getting it back um but that's just part of this whole process for me it's pretty hard um anyway there's things I sacrificed for him that I'm now trying to tell myself um I it's a benefit you know now that he's gone I'm trying to see some good in this um people say well no he's not suffering well I don't I guess one day I'm gonna see that but you know he was in a lot of pain he was in a lot of suffering but I miss him and my life has been turned upside down because of it um I'm having to move in with someone that's a whole thing I posted an ad on the Tri-Cities Washington Craigslist and the one for here this long sob story about my best friend just passed away he was the main breadwinner I don't have a driver's license I need to have to live with someone that will push me in that direction um, it's just I was talking to someone and uh, I kind of like them but I just I can't live with someone that just sits around all day and watches TV because that will make me want to sit around and watch TV all day I have to be around someone that I get along with but they're a go-getter like they always have something to do uh, they're laid back in a way and they I can say a joke and they'll laugh but they have to be a hard worker so anyway um, I basically wrote this ad saying I have moving expenses because thank goodness he he paid when he was working for life insurance he took out a loan against it and he was making payments on it but he oh sorry I I, I, I swear I have ADD sometimes I'm like what what was I talking about I like, totally space out which is a a thing I'm worried about when I'm driving like you can't do that when you're driving but anyway I have these moments where it's like oh, what like I blank out but anyway um and I don't do drugs surprisingly uh but anyway I, I posted this ad saying uh if you need a babysitter if you need if you have an elderly person that lives with you I can help them um, I'm fine around el the elderly. Um, do you want just company? Which I said no sex because that would totally get complicated. Um, it's just I don't like the thought of oh well this is great because I'm going to have this girl that I'm attracted to you know uh, and she's going to have sex with me all the time and that's going to be a deal right? Um, no. <laughs> you know I mean if something happens something happens but I don't want to um you know have this pro problem it's just it, so many things like guys don't see it that way but us women we're smarter sorry sometimes sometimes the woman's smarter I'm sorry that's the fact sometimes the woman's smarter anyway it's just one of those I'm looking into the crystal ball and it the future is not good with that situation um I wouldn't mind you know one day living with someone that we have a relationship with just basically everything that was wrong with Harry is his um, he would get tired all the time and he was in pain all the time but they wouldn't have that of course they're fertile because I really that's really the only thing that's keeping me going is knowing that I'm going to get my life together I'm going to get a job but 
job other than my selling. I still want that to be a full-time job one day. I see all sorts of people on YouTube that, um, you know, they, that they make so much money doing it. I, I know that there's, there's money and I just need to work harder at it, at it. Um, it's just a problem is you need to have a lot of money, especially when you're first starting out to buy things. And I would have to wait until I sold something in order to go in to buy something. And we were having money problems and so I didn't really have that. Uh, and so inventory is a big problem for me. And hopefully this life insurance thing, um, it's just I've been wanting to buy jackets. I've been wanting to buy nice jackets to sell uh, because this is the time of year to get them at thrift stores. And I was like, really excited to go and to buy that stuff. And then just after he died, just my whole train of thought just completely different. Um, I. I'm trying to go through the motions, um, I'm trying to get, go through the motions, I'm trying to go through this house and, and list things, um, fairly cheap, you know, not to rip myself off, but cheap enough to entice people to come. Um, I took pictures of its computers, so many computers that are kind of obsolete. Um, but I feel like the cases are worth something. I mean, if someone is dabbling in computer repair and stuff, you know, they can uh, stockpile some of this stuff. And I found so many little computer parts he's accumulated. He has these, like, boxes and these tool boxes. And there's, like, a fishing lure box that he filled with computer parts. And so I feel like someone that is into computer repair is a good time to stock up. And, um, I have this big pile of, you know, like two toolboxes and all these, the, those, um, clear ones with all the compartments, those are like 10 bucks at least a piece. So me selling them for 10 because they're filled with computer parts, I think that's fair. Or everything's 30 bucks, so that's really good. And I have NES stuff that I've been keeping because I, I, accumulated it when I was a teenager, I collected it, but I think it's time to get rid of that stuff because every time I play a NES game, it's through an emulator online, I don't look at the stuff, like, I probably haven't, I have probably looked at it twice since we've lived here, so, we've lived here for like seven, eight years, so, um, my, my friend, one of the, the hardest parts about this whole process is Every time I talk to someone, it's about business um, or it's about living arrangements because pretty much every day I get um, like one or two emails, which is pretty good, you know, two or three emails, all guys, you know, um, there's been a couple women, um, this one, this one deal I'm kind of, um, I haven't post this on Facebook, so if you're seeing this, you know, I'll probably post on Facebook later. Um, this one deal, uh, in, in town, um, I can live in this place, there, someone's moving out of this place, they, I've been renting this place out. It's a single wide trailer, which, I've told myself that I want to move in with someone because it would drive myself insane just being alone for months, and it would be better if I had come someone to live with. But I think this is a pretty good deal, especially because they live on like the same property, so it's not like I'm really alone. But it's a single wide trailer mobile home. And it has some things to, it, it, it's functional, it's livable, but there's some things that need to be fixed on it. So if I help them fix it, which would be good for me because I want to have, you know, a little two bedroom apartment, one or apartment you know, a little house one day, like, I like actually, you know, uh, who knows probably if I won the lottery, I'd probably still have a little house, because that's just how I am, uh, but this little, like, little cute little houses, you know, that you see, and I can see myself and, and a child living in a little house like that, and one day, you know, it's just one of those things was, 
uh, me, I could have gotten a job, sure. But it's just Harry was more, he splurged on something that was a $500 thing. It wasn't me when I splurged on something that was a $5 thing. And so we were different like that. So, and especially because he had several thousand dollars in um, medical debt on his credit. And I have some things on my credit that need to be paid off. Uh, but I'm going to also need to have, you know, once I get a steady job, get a credit card and pay my bills on the credit card, like people do to build up your credit. Um, my credit is like, the last time I checked, it was like, you know, a little, like a hair under average. It wasn't completely destroyed. It was like, just right there. And so I think like six months or a year of, um, you know, as soon as possible, I would like to get a credit card to do this, but to get a credit card to pay my bills on and then pay off every month this credit card like people do to build up my credit. Um, and I actually did see this one remodeled, it was this trailer from the 70s, but it was completely restored um, trailer for three grand, but I don't want to worry about paying rent right now. I want to live in a place where I don't have to pay rent. That's not a worry. Um, I can work it off. I mean, if someone needs someone around the house to do dishes and stuff, that's fine. But it's just my income right now is so sporadic. I don't want to stress. I just, I need to have the time where, like I keep on telling myself I need to go to a rehab type place where it's like completely different than what I'm used to. Um, uh, where I'm used to living to, you know, to fix my brain because my brain is so messed up right now. Um, and, oh, I, I have power tools. I have, like, I have a big screen TV I'm, I'm trying to sell. Um, anyway, um, I'm trying to, you know, live in a place where I don't have to worry about paying rent. They just want my company. They just want someone around the house. A second pair of hands, you know, uh, and I'm surprisingly, I didn't think, I thought that I was going to have to just go with whoever and I didn't, wouldn't really have a selection. But now I'm very surprised at how many people would not mind me around and would like the company. Some people, you know, one person had a, a kid and I would be perfectly fine, you know, babysitting. Um, some people, they're like, oh, well, I have things on eBay on a list, and I don't like that because I don't like a lot of listing stuff for people because eBay is so, it's not like a flat fee you, put, you pay for listing fees. You, it slowly accumulates, and so I couldn't really, unless I bought the item from them because they know how much it would eventually sell for, I can't split the cost with them when it sells because there's expenses and everything. I can't really do that. And so I don't like it when people say, oh, well, I have things on eBay. I want to list. I don't know anything about eBay. Well, eBay, eBay is pretty easy. I mean, all you do is you take a picture, a good picture of something. You list all the information possible that you can think of that you think of that the person would, would make or break the deal for them. And that's it. And then you just make sure that everything is well packed. Um, if it's something like a couch that you don't want to ship, say, pick up only. Um, you know, eBay's pretty easy. I don't like it when people say, I don't know anything about it. It's very tedious, like anything. You know, you do the same thing over and over again. Um, oh, and I have some things I need to list later. Um, but it's just, I'm really trying to not sit around and just watch TV and feel sorry for myself. I'm trying to push myself. Because I do have to move out of here before December 20th. We got an eviction notice before he died to leave December 20th. And so I'm trying to, you know, pay the rent enough to stay here that long. Because that's like a month, of course. And so I'm really, really trying to... It's just, I'm, I'm buying in the housework and everything. I, I've always been buying on it. Um, 
well, ever since he got on disability, I've been fine on it. I was pretty good before he was at home all the time. And I, I, I think his clothes are worn so much, I don't want to donate them because we always talked about, you know, getting new clothes and we could never afford it. And so it's just very hard to decide what to keep and what to give away. I have this wood twin size bed frame that I need to buy a mattress for. Um, and that's the bed I'm going to have. I'm going to downsize into a spare bedroom in someone's house probably. And so I'm going to have to have a clean, dry place with no pets around, no anything that would damage the item, you know, of course, um, a place to keep my stuff. And that's going to be an issue. And also, Whoa. Hi. Um, I, uh, the battery died mid-sentence, um, earlier. And so I charged, you know, the battery and here I am again. Because I feel like I didn't say everything I wanted to say. Um, I need to go to bed soon. I'm very tired. Um, I've been falling asleep on the couch for a few hours and then getting up, going on the computer for an hour and then cracking myself to bed, which that might not sound like the best idea, but that's what I've been doing. Um, I need to clean this bathroom. Um, I have a friend coming over on Monday and, um, uh, uh, this bathroom is still dirty from when Harry was sick. Um, I need to clean the toilet. I need to, um, his shower chair that I bought him for five dollars a year or so ago at Goodwill, um, needs to be washed. I have a friend that has fibromyalgia, I think, something like that. Um, and he's thin, but it's just his joints are wearing down on him. And he actually uh, takes baths because he fell in the shower alone and he couldn't get up. Um, and I think he was in the like that for like an hour or more. Uh, and so um, to be on the safe side, he takes baths. And I feel like you know, he has a lot of pride, you know how guys are, but I told him that I would, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze, I guess not right now, uh, but I told him, I'm going to give this chair away anyway, I mean, I would like if you took it and used it, um, also, three or four months before he died, he fell in the shower, and it hurt his hip, and then he fell outside there was these like grass islands like these strips and they're like dipped like they should really fix that but it was dipped and it was dark outside and so he fell that time and it was the same hip and it broke it hurt it even more he was gonna take an x-ray he was gonna see if he broke something and he didn't go to the x-ray because it would have took a special trip to tri-cities and like at least twenty thirty dollars for gas to go um and so he just was you know putting it off and um and then of course the x-ray itself is billed to his insurance and then that's thousands of dollars and then that would be more money he would have owed and etc so anyway he wasn't looking forward to it and um he so anyway, I got him this walker and it helped him. I nagged at him. I saw it at Goodwill and then I, um, th something happened and I nagged at him until he went back to Goodwill later that day and I spent $9 on it. Um, and he goes, well, I can just get that through the insurance will pay for it. But I said, um, like, 
you need a, a walker right now. Um, you, you know, I'm going to get you this. I'll pay for it. And, um, anyway, he, because he was like going to, you know, from here to the bathroom, to the bathroom, to his chair and back, he was actually putting his hands on my shoulders to walk because it would take off weight off of his hips, off of his body to, to walk. And so I said, you need a walker. And so, I mean, it's not like I, I minded or anything. I mean, he'd be sitting there talking and then he'd need to go to the bathroom. And so um, I got him this walker. So my friend isn't really to that point yet where he needs a walker, but it's there and so he can just use it when he needs it like it's, it's there anyway for him to take and so you know when he comes over eventually I'm going to do that um I have some clothes I want to keep of Harry's the his favorite tr tr charts he would wear all the time he wore or overalls because of his abdomen because of his liver and his gaining fluid um his it would hurt to wear regular jeans and so he wore overalls and I'm going to keep his overalls because when I look at them it just reminds me of him so much but in a good way and I'm going to keep a couple shirts and actually threw away he had sho shoes and boots and stuff and slippers that he had that are worn anything that's just really really worn out I'm going to not donate um he has these socks over here that I know you can think, well, Jody, you can wear the socks, but they're not, they have a, like, a neck, I guess you could call it, like, the, like, it goes, like, up here, like, almost to, like, your knee, like, mid-calf, and so, um, that's not the kind of socks that I wear, um, and so I'm just gonna, you know, sort through them and throw, you know, the ones that are new pretty much I'm gonna you know put in a donate pile um anything that really isn't worth listing um and things I'm gonna donate I'm just gonna get rid of a bunch of stuff um and I'm gonna get rid of so much stuff I'm gonna get rid of most everything that is him and I and our stuff accumulated like this bed I have a twin sized wood framed bed with drawers underneath that I was saving for when I have had a child because I thought it would be so cool if they had the bed that I grew up using that I if I had a boy I would just it's a, like white with like a metallic like gold trim in some parts um and so I thought about like repainting it maybe just touch up paint like just fixing the edges and stuff that are worn off from moving it um but I thought maybe you know I'd repaint the whole thing black or whatever um it's like glossy so I use like semi-gloss paint um but whatever right now I want to use it for myself too because I don't need a big bed some people they love having a big bed because they sprawl out and everything uh when I sleep I just I'm not that type of person. I guess like I would wake up that way because I toss and turn at night. Uh, but to save room in the bedroom, which I still don't know where I'm gonna go. Um, I still don't know, you know, where I'm going to go. Um, 100%, you know, I, I have talked to a few people and it's almost like dating, like you're getting to know someone personally and it's just so overwhelming because they feel like, oh, I like this person. And then, I don't know, I, I just, I'm feeling very spoiled. I'm very, I'm feeling very like a spoiled little brat because I'm just thinking, you know, they aren't hairy so I don't want to live with them. Oh, wow, wow, wow. I can't think that way, but it's just, like, right now I'm feeling that way. I'm feeling like I don't want to move any place. And I try to just imagine myself living with someone, you know, to try to 
like use my imagination um, and I think there's some good opportunities I would like to live near Kennewick because that's where a lot of things are um, Kennewick, Washington and Tri-Cities I feel like in Tri-Cities in general there's a lot of businesses and if there's a lot of businesses there's a lot of work um, there's income there's a sales tax in Washington I'm not used to sales tax I, I grew, up, grew up in Oregon um, I think that I would eventually like to live in Portland I grew up in Portland and so I miss Portland sometimes it's a beautiful city I love the things there um, I love I loved living there I didn't really my grandparents were too overprotective I didn't really go out when I was a kid you know a little bit but I've never really lived there in the way that I had disposable income so I'd go out and I'm not really a going out type person but there's definitely things that are always happening there uh, the want waterfront's beautiful there's just so many things that actually for this last few years I have imagined like if I was living alone I'd have a small apartment and I would live close to the max and you know I would just do groceries and oh also I need to fix my bike I have a bike that I've always talked about you know wanting to to ride but we have a lot of these little um seeds I guess they're they are they're like have these little spikes on them on, on them they're like a little spike ball and so they pretty much destroyed my tires on my bike I think we fixed the one and then the other one is flat and so I'm thinking like 50 bucks maybe I'll, I'll pay someone flat like hundred dollar bike it's a cheap Walmart bike um and so I'm going to have to fix that so I have some wheels under me and it's just there's there's things I have to do I actually he has these loan papers he, he called them tickets where you pay a little bit to extend the loan every month it's like a storage and then um, you pay them back the loan in order to get the item back of course um, I some of them are guns and I don't want to own a gun I don't want to be in possession of a gun um, I want to sell them as quick as possible um, I don't think that I can sell them to the pawn shop uh, and if I did it would only be like hundred dollars more than the loan or whatever um, and unfortunately to I was looking last night two of them already expired one was a gun one was a camera um, that he he bought this camera for me even though I didn't want him to he, he would I would tell him not to buy something and then he would go and buy it anyway um and he would take out the camera and then put it back and and you know put a, put a loan on it to put it back and then take it out put it back and so we didn't really have this camera and I didn't want to use it out of spite because I told him we couldn't afford him to buy a camera for me uh, so that's gone I was gone like the 18th and then this gun that was probably a pretty valuable gun the loan was like $260 and um, I guess I mean I could be upset about it but I'm just trying to get over that most of the tickets though are like December 18th at the earliest and so I can work with that uh, when I get this life insurance money I can just take all that stuff out and then I have a friend that knows people so he can help me sell these things um, and selling guns is a very tricky process I of course I wouldn't want to get in trouble with something like that um, so it's just very you have to be very careful with selling those selling stuff like that um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't I would rather just have the money I don't want to be in possession of them um, I have bullets again I don't I don't know what to do with to do with that 
Um, I just, I'm just overwhelmed because this is like new stuff. I've never had to do this stuff before. And I'm trying to be angry at Harry for dying, but you can't really be angry. Um, you can't be angry at someone for something happening to, to them that was out of their control. And it would be natural if he killed himself. Um, like if he just shot himself in the head, uh, because that was his choice, but he, he loved me so much, he loved me more than, I mean, I would say, he said, I loved you to each other all the time, like ten times a day, and it's just, I would always say, I love you, and you would say, I love you more, and I would say, you can't love me more. Nobody can love the other person more. And then he would say, But I do love you more. I, I love you more than I could ever tell you. I love you a whole universe for. It. And it's just he would tell me that all the time. And he just, he loved me. And Thursday, I think it was, or Friday. I got his death certificate and copies for, you know, some errands I need to do. Some, um, I need to put the electric bill in my name and then get an extension on it. Um, I need you to do that. And also, I need to return this truck because that's for the best. Um, and they'll probably ask for a death certificate. Um, and so the person at the mortuary did Xerox copies for me. And so I can do that. He was, he was pretty nice. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying not to take it personal, but I'm trying to think that he was nice because it's just I kind of work for him indirectly. And so, I don't know, I mean, I guess that's just his job, I mean, he's just a very good listener. Um, I kind of wish in a way that, I don't know, it's just, this, like, three times I've been around him, um, I just wanted to, he would say, do you want to do any more errands? And I would almost want to make up an errand just to be with him a little more. It's just for some reason he made me feel good about just hanging out with him, being in his presence. And it's just some people just make you feel good in that way. Like that you don't know them that well, but you just have that good feeling around them. Um, and I want to move in with someone like that, someone that makes me feel good to just hang out with them and to be with them. Um, I want to be with someone that's laid back and doesn't get offended that easy, but they're, they work hard. Uh, I don't think living with someone that's older would necessarily be a good idea because they're retired. Um, I know some people that are retired, they're active, they do things, but it's just they don't need, they don't have an incentive to do things like the people that are working do. They do things and are active because they want to. Um, and so I think like being around people that need to work because they have bills to pay and things, they have that incentive, um, would be better for me because that would motivate me more. Um, and I, I don't know, I think I have that in check. I, did do two loads of laundry last night. Um, I don't have any wet clothes in the washer right now. I have some. I'm kind of, I just put in there, um, but I haven't queued it up to wash it yet. Um, I did a, my first load of dishes since he died, um, last night because they were piling up. Um, I actually was pretty caught up, uh, around when he died because I was, catching up on dishes to wash the kitchen, uh, to 
wash your kitchen, catch up on house cleaning and stuff. And I threw away his shoes. Um, I want to fill up the trash every week with stuff. Um, I have like a dumpster of crap that I want to throw away. Um, so I think it'd be better if I just tried to just fill up the trash. Um, Monday morning is when the trash guy comes and so um, tonight I'm going to have to figure out just find things I want to throw away um, just to fill up the trash so I have that benefit of you know getting rid of things every week um, just absolute garbage you know things that cannot be donated cannot be sold things I don't want obviously I wanted to, right after he died, I wanted to put away all the Christmas decorations. Um, but I'm really trying to enjoy the Christmas season because it is my favorite time of year. It's just, I'm trying to go through the motions of my life. Just things I habitually look forward to. I'm trying to look forward to it still. Um, you know, new food products that I've been looking forward to trying. I'm trying to still look forward to trying them. I Websites I go to, I'm trying to still go to them. I'm just trying to not have my life go to a standstill as much as I would like to. But just continuing to have these highlights of my week, highlights of my day, still be the highlights of my day and week. Um, I do get bitter, you know, people complain about little things that we complain about. It's nothing that is anything, you know, specifically to my situation. But they complain about, like, oh, I needed to, you know, buy, you know, um, um, something that was $100 that I didn't have on um, so that or, uh, oh, I miss my boyfriend and uh, he has to work overtime this week. Or, uh, my best friend told a secret to my other best friend. Now I'm upset. Or, you know, these stupid things that we focus on um, that are stupid, but that's just how human nature is. I'm trying not to be bitter towards these people that focus or focus on little things that we focus on um because I want to say well my best friend's dead so fuck you you know I want to be really angry about it but I don't say anything because that's stupid well that's natural but it's it's overreacting um it's not they don't deserve that um you know, like, I want pizza, but I can't afford it. I'm so upset. It's like, oh, fuck you. You know, my best friend's not allowed to even eat pizza anymore. So you're a fucking bitch, you know. I don't just want to, like, scream at them. Um, but I don't, I don't want to rain on people's praise even more. You know, I actually kind of did that a little bit. This person said, I appreciate everyone that sees me for who I am and they still love me. And I said that one person in my life that I had died and they said my condolences and it was kind of cool um they actually said they really wanted to print her and i said i'm so sorry they live in chicago and i said i'm so sorry that you don't live here there's so many things you say you need that i have um and i wouldn't i wouldn't mind i mean there's some things i would give them for free in my life right now um which make me feel good because i love them um so, I really need to cut this short, um, or I need to cut it short is beyond that point. Uh, the battery's gonna die soon, uh, and of course it's gonna die the second I say the battery's gonna die. Uh, but yeah, it's just, long story short, my life kind of sucks right now. My life is so overwhelming, but I'm trying to go through the motions. I'm trying to do something every day. If I do something every day, it doesn't matter how many hours a day that I pout and feel sorry for myself. 
as long as I do things, as long as I have something sells, I get it ready to ship. I buy new things to sell, a few little things. Because it's the peak season right now for selling for me. So buying things to sell that's Christmas related isn't really that big a deal because I will sell them, you know. Um, I'm trying to focus on that. It's just, as long as I do something every day, I'm fine. Like if I don't spend a week and not do anything. If I spend a week, week at a time, not doing anything because I'm feeling sorry for myself, that's not good. I can take a day off, but I need to get back into it. I need to do house cleaning. I need to sell things. I need to list things to sell. I need to do things. Um, and I'm trying to be proud of myself. It's hard. Um, because the person that pat me on the back and reassured me and kissed me and told me they loved me, it's gone. And I'm just hoping in a year I'm going to be totally different. And some things in my insecurities and things are going to be gone. And I just try to tell myself that I'm going to be so good in a year. I'm going to be so good. I'm going to have a car. I'm going to have a life. I'm going to have maybe other friends to socialize with. Um, there's actually this place in town that plays bingo and Harry always laughed at me when I said that sounds like fun because I'm an old lady sometimes I'm like 32 going on 60 um, and so you know I can do things like that I can go to potlucks I can have a life my, my own life my own ide identity and I can be proud of that I can be proud of myself and, you know, I'll try to update. It's hard because I'm not going into YouTube anymore. Um, but doing videos, I mean, uh, I watch YouTube videos all the time. I'm cr crazy. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm just, I'm here. And Harry's not anymore and I'm empty. But I'm trying to fill that spot with other things, with positive things, with things that aren't self-destructive. I'm trying not to just eat a dozen donuts that I bought at Walmart because I hate myself. Um, I'm not trying to do things that are not positive. Um, I promise myself that I'll take better care of myself because Harry always cut all my ass about taking care of myself. Um, I don't want to be one of those people that gains 100 pounds because their husband dies or whatever. Uh, that I hear about, I don't want to destroy my body and destroy my mind because of this. Um, that would be the worst thing to do. And I don't know, I, I think I have a pretty level, I mean, I should be proud of myself because I'm keeping as level as it's possible in this situation. You know, someone I've known since I was 18, that was my whole center of my universe that I loved so much and I told them I loved them a dozen times a day is gone now. And I'm here. I'm still here. I'm still living. He didn't pull me down with him when he died. I'm still alive. I didn't die with him. And the world turns still. The world still goes on. And I'm proof. Here. I'm, I'm proof. I'm here to weep and to cry, and to move, and to get my driver's license, and to get a small Honda or something, you know, that's like, you know, $5,000, and live, and still sell things, because I love doing that, I, oh my god, don't get me started, and I'm going to have a child someday, and I'm going to do things with my life, still, um, this isn't the end of me. This is the beginning of something else. This is going to manifest something great. Uh, or I'll die trying, you know. That's that's all I can really say. I mean, I'm completely dumbfounded. I'm completely flabbergasted, because again, I'm 60 years old sometimes. I'm just completely like, like, eyes wide open, my mouth a dropping, can't believe this happened, but I'm, I, I need to do things, um, 
I'm going to, I don't know if I said this in my previous video, that I, I'm going to put these together. I asked the neighbors if I could stay for Thanksgiving, and they said yes, and it's only somebody I talked to a couple times where I talked to them about Harry dying, and they said, if you need anything, we're here. And so I said, you know, it would be great if I had some place to go for Thanksgiving, because my family's too far away, it would be too much of a pain. And my one friend that I talked to about the, the shower chair, that whole thing, He's not a sociable person. He He's just thrilled to just be in an empty house. This is actually would be great for him because he's empty, in a big empty house alone. He just like listens to the radio alone and I he hates that I just go on and on and on and on and about nothing. Um and so he wouldn't be good to he would just not say anything, eat his food, drive me home, and then drive himself home, and it wouldn't be enjoyable. Uh, I would love it, but he would hate it, and it just wouldn't be good. Um, so, being with them, it, they're very friendly people, and it would be good, you know, eating and, and, and talking. And I actually washed this shirt that I wear to nice occasions, uh, that I think it will still fit. I, gained weight since then, but I think I, since I've gained weight, I think I've worn it before, but I'll try it on, um, and of course I have other shirts I could wear, but that shirt I, that's kind of like my Thanksgiving Christmas shirt that I wear always, uh, that my aunt bought me years ago, um, but anyway, I, I'm just trying to look forward to that, I'm trying to look forward to things in my life, um, because that's what I have right now is, I'm just trying to look forward to the future, even though Harry's not in it. I'm trying so desperately to look forward to, look forward and like what's ahead of me. Um, it's hard. That's one of the hardest parts is this next year. We were talking about what to do this next year and our plans and my plans are going to be totally different. Um, and I don't think I need to elaborate. That's pretty much it. So anyway, I hope you're doing a, lot, a hell of a lot better than I am. And I need to cut it off because the battery's going to die. So, uh, take care. You know, I didn't cry. I did the other take that I'm not going to upload. I sobbed my eyes out. Um, and so, yeah. Peace out. I'll, I'll see y'all later.